I don't think I'm like that with my friends. Why didn't you buy me my chakwe tiao? Why? <laughs> Did you forget about I mean, obviously, I wouldn't go to Sorry, you're telling Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Hello there, I'm Otelli. And I'm Steven, and we're both presenters from CNA. Today, we are on Spillit to basically answer a lot of questions, including risky questions about what being know. a presenter yeah, is like. Well, I guess we'll find out. That's why we're going to spill it. And that's why you need to be here to... Uh... Hear it. <laughs> See it. There you go. My career started many, 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 many years ago um, as a sports reporter. And then, you know, I... Uh, dabbled a bit in radio, print, and finally um, landed doing TV. But yeah. as for me, well, um, yeah, I, I kind of f fell into my job at CNA. So I was working in a production company and they were looking for presenters. And I, I have to admit, I think they were a little bit desperate, so they, they found me. I was doing some freelance work for CNA. and Right place yeah. at the right time. That's true, and a morning show, and I, I jumped into it, hit first, and having never really done live TV mm. prior to that. So it was a real awakening. <sighs> I don't know. Actually, I wasn't nervous coming in here until you started telling me about all these risky questions. So I'm like, let's hope that we still have our jobs at the end of What's in uh, this pile of cards? Well, yeah. we'll see. We'll take it as it comes. To start the game, each player will draw five question cards from the deck. Players will then take turns choosing a question card from their hand to ask the opponent. And players will also be given three action cards each where they can skip, swap, switch questions at any point in time. For skip, you skip the question, swap, you ditch the question and answer the next card from the deck, and switch, you get your opponent to answer instead. I go first. Okay, well let's just start. That's quite easy for you, alright? Okay. Let's, let's, let's warm you up first. Do you need a degree in mass comms or journalism to be in this profession? Oh, wow. Um, I know I have a degree. Yeah, wait. Yeah, I have a degree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think uh, a lot of it has to do with experience. So the, the paper qualifications help at the beginning, but I think a lot of it is if you've got like 30 years of experience but don't have a degree, there's a good chance we might still hire you because I mean, in this job, experience counts a lot more than just and a paper That's true though, but are you ready right? for a trickier question? What's that? I mean, but everyone already has a degree, yeah. so what's gonna... How are you gonna stand out from the rest? Ah, so you're gonna ask yourself, to what degree will you go to to get the job? This is a pretty typical question we always get. How do you cope with a bad day when you still have to present the news? Well, I think the, the important thing is to be professional. And I think sometimes whatever happens at home or whatever happens in your personal life, um, you know, when you're at work, you just have to put on your game mm. face. Actually, yeah. speaking of which as well, there was an incident where one of the presenters, she was um, on air, yeah. it was live, and suddenly she had heart palpitation and oh. she was like, I can't read now. She took off her mic and she left. Yeah, yeah, and I, I remember the studio director, the I happened to be the only presenter who was there, no makeup, <laughs> looking <laughs> ghastly, like so ghastly, like you know, that could be my Halloween look, like yeah, really. Yeah. But it was like, you know, Telly, come on, come on, you, up next, up next. And I remember it's just jumping in and just, you know, having to do the job professionally, yeah. although I, I, I look like hell. So the next but, time you uh, see Otelli yeah. on the end, not look, look, looking so good, now you know why. Yeah. Right. Are you guys paid a lot? <sighs> <laughs> if only. <laughs> no, I, I, we're not. Okay, so in the US, people have heard stories of how the news anchors, uh, you know, uh, negotiate contracts which are in like the millions and millions of dollars. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, uh, let's just be very frank and honest with you. It doesn't happen here in Singapore. We do make enough money to be, you know, comfortable enough to take care of our families, but you will not get rich, you know. By doing this job, you will not become a millionaire, billionaire, you know, even if you work at this for like, I think, 30, 40 mm. years. Have you ever presented a piece of news but didn't understand it one bit? <laughs> it's your question, not mine. Yeah, it's got to do with, um, you know, when you interview certain lawyers ah. and they use a lot of legal jargon. Um, which, I mean, if I'm confounded, then I'm sure a lot of our viewers will be as well. Or they get very upset when we sort of uh, paraphrase it. I remember interviewing like a doctor about some mm. new surgical process and describing yeah. it and using all the technical yeah. terms. And then I said, so, so doctor, what you're trying to say is, essentially it's a bit like a plumber, right? You know, you got to stick the pipe in there and then you just pump a little bit and get mm. the water out and then you seal up the hole, right? It was like, how very dare you? And he was like, what? You know, like, yeah, you just made my $20,000 procedure look like a $50 plumbing, you know. Were you ever on the verge of crying while reporting the news? Be honest now. Ooh. I've actually cried there. I have before. With uh, oh. 
when I was doing an interview, this was for Talking Point, I was interviewing um, not too long ago, uh, ago the uh, the polar bear at the zoo. Yeah, Inuka. Passed away, Inuka passed away. And so I was interviewing a lot of their keepers and you know the guys who were taking care of them. And there was this one um, zookeeper who was telling me his story and he was, I mean, yeah, because he was crying and I just couldn't help myself. I cried too. But was you it know, for the show or you genuinely felt no, no, like... I, no, I, I genuinely felt, I, did, I didn't put it on. I, I, <laughs> Let's hope not. I, no, I, I mean, <laughs> Whatever no. to get the ratings up. <laughs> oh, come on, I'm not that bad. If I'm not a news presenter, I would be a... If you're talking about like a sports career, yeah. I think I would have very much liked to be a figure skater. Mm-hmm. That's something I really would not have expected you to say. <laughs> Yep, still you don't know me all that well after all, although no. having known me for what, 20 years? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I wouldn't go up to you and say, Hey, do you like <laughs> figure skating? How do you recover from a mistake like pronouncing a word, stuttering, or even... Have you ever had a laughing fit on air actually? Oh, yeah. yes. But why don't Switch. you tell oh. us your story? Switch! Ah! <laughs> ah let me play my Switch card. Okay, so there is this particular word okay. that for some reason, for quite a stretch of time, I, I just get like well, well, a, 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 yeah exactly. I'm coming to that. Like, I would just get like this mind block, like this brain freeze, and I'm like, it's the word, it's the word decision. Yeah. So it was really, it was one okay. of the strangest things about my career. It's like I think for two months, every time I chance upon that word, and I would be so paranoid about yeah. saying that word, I would, I would make sure I read all my scripts, and if the word decision is there, I would Change turn it. it around to like, okay, it's decided upon that something like that. But I mean, that curse has been lifted. So wow. decision is 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 back on the script. It's no longer a bad decision. No longer, thank God. Okay. Yeah. What's the laptop for? We have that laptop or that computer in front of us. We actually use it. So whenever there's breaking news, I mean, Google, the thing with Google is, I mean, like, you know, you don't want to be reporting fake news as well. So we, we get from the wires like AP or Reuters where we know that, you know, it's legit because that's yeah. our news sources. So we always go to that. Like sometimes they update with numbers. So, so what we're Googling yeah. is uh, historical information yeah. that in the past 20 years there have been, you know, over 10 air crashes mm-hmm. that have been related to the engine, blah, 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 that kind of stuff. Uh, what is an assumption about news presenter that is completely untrue? <laughs> You're talking about desks covering our legs, yeah, that we don't wear pants, you know? <laughs> <laughs> or you wear shorts to work. And, and, yeah, now, and you can actually. And now presenters work from home. Ah! Some presenters. Yeah, so, yeah. That's right. I'm sure they're wearing shorts at home too. Oh, wait. That was also me. Yeah. <laughs> so, true or false? I'm a different person off screen. Uh, I'm still the same person, but. Are what you nicer? About? That's a good question. I might be nicer off air actually. No, but I remember I, I, I was quite upset with um, one of the interviews I did because in India, there were like several buildings collapsing at one time, you know, within a span of a month. And I spoke to the, to the minister, one of the interior ministers, yeah. I think from India. And I kept asking him like, you know, is it just because it's, it's just shoddy, right? I mean, the work is just shoddy. There's no responsibility in the construction sector and stuff. And I remember he was, he was irate, I think. Uh, I don't know why he felt I was being accused. So yeah. he was going, ah, oh, no. So he didn't answer the question. He was trying to skirt around the question. I asked the same question a second time. And I think for a presenter, like, I just wanted the viewers to know, like, obviously that this, this particular person is not answering the question. And I asked him the same question a third time. Wow. So as I give you three times, I asked the same question. And if you're skirting it, I think it's very clear to everyone that you're skirting it. So, I mean, I'm just saying, like, things like that. I, I don't think I'm like that with my friends. Why didn't you buy me my chakwe tiao? Why? <laughs> Did you forget about I mean, obviously I wouldn't go to Sorry, you're telling sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I am actually nicer, maybe when I'm not on the <laughs> What are some things that news presenters do in the studio that their audiences wouldn't know? I, I, well, I, I, I've eaten a lot of bad food, you know, because yeah, we used to do a lot of cooking and we get these uh, Michelin star chefs to come in. And How would the food be bad if it's no, a no, Michelin so, chef? So it would, because they would come in with have a set, you know, and I'd be like, okay, we're going to go live and for the next four minutes, you have to cook that dish and talk to me at the same time. And so, you know, they'll be doing it and obviously in four minutes, how well can you really cook a dish right. while being distracted by this guy asking you a thousand questions, right? Right, right. So what would be, what would be bad like, is, mm, and then after having to go to the toilet, That is fantastic, right? you know. <laughs> <laughs> but then you have like, to run to the sorry, toilet. Sorry, sorry, you know, come on, I'll make it up to you, you know. <laughs> oh, really? You know, so okay, that, yeah. that's something, because for TV, well. we, we gotta, you know, you gotta, yeah, make it, make it look good. What was the most, what was the most memorable interview you have ever done? Um, so I'm a big, like, huge sports fan, Right, mm-hmm. so when I heard that Mani Pacquiao 
uh, was only the best, like world's best pound for pound boxer. Yeah. He was coming to Singapore. I was like, please, I will do it. I will do anything, like you know, mm. for the next year if you let me interview him. So because I I followed all his you know his boxing matches and he's such an <clears throat> iconic figure in uh, Philippines. Um, I was really thrilled to have interviewed him. When I actually met him, he was very 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 meek. Believe it or not, for a boxer. Okay. Sounds like you were a little bit disappointed by the. Um, I was, and then it, I, I was a little bit because I was, I was hoping like you know, okay. I don't know why. They give you pound for pound. You yeah, know, like, the best pound for pound. <laughs> and on the, the other guy, on the other hand, I mean, his opponent um, was very friendly. And actually, I, I remember that at that time, I actually went to buy chicken rice. Yeah. Because I wanted to get a reaction from these boxers okay. on what it's like eating local food, and I didn't expect them to actually eat my chicken rice because I'm like. I was hiding the box, right? Because I didn't want all these PR yeah. people to say, no, they are looking, they're watching their way. They have, their way in is just like, you know, tomorrow. But I actually whipped the chicken rice. Like, hey, welcome to Singapore. Here, would you like to try some chicken rice? It's like our national dish. Yeah. And the guy actually took a spoonful of it. So actually, I got a good um, PTC. There you go. <laughs> one my turn. Tell us a fun fact about the profession. You get to learn a lot. You hear, you know, you meet different people almost every day talking about different issues. Um, and as a result of that, I think I've learned so much about, like I said, you know, a lot of little things along the way. And also, one of the perks, right? Yeah. I mean, you get free passes. Like, for instance, if okay. you cover a certain musician or if you cover a certain event, you get to go to the event. Oh, right? sure. but, but that's... Come on, Dutch. <laughs> that's because you have to do your research to yeah. understand what the event might be like before you interview <laughs> the, uh, you know, the star themselves, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> also, having said that, I mean, we're quite strict about what the things that we can yeah, get at yeah. least. Um, because I mean, I think this is something which is good because we can't... How, you, you, how can't you, like, we can't, you can't like give a car. We can't be seen as being Yeah, You can't give her a car, no matter how hard you try. Yeah. So for us poor presenters, right, and that's why we will never be rich, is the fact that we cannot yeah. do any uh, ads, we cannot take on any sort of... Um, endorsements. Endorsements yeah. and stuff. That's why, you know... <laughs> okay. Tales, last but not least. True or false, being a news presenter is a stable job for life. Is it an iron rice bowl? Yeah, I think I think we, we have we have we have news presenters uh, actually who have been let go, like on the very day mm. for certain um, you know. But I think you, you must you must have really done something quite wrong, you know. Yeah. Um, but other than that, no, I think never say no. So I I I, I think any job, right? Yeah. I mean whether. And we don't know what the world is going to be like, so the way things change, maybe, I mean, we've all heard of robotic, you know, news presenters, actual <laughs> robots who can read the news. Yeah, you know, we've and, seen and them, yeah, we've seen, we've seen those, them too. Yeah. So, yeah, who knows, we might be out of a job in 20, 30 years. But mm. I figured I'd be retiring in the end. <laughs> yeah, so it all so works out. Doesn't yeah. matter, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was okay. Yeah, it was okay. It was, were, yeah. were, I think they were safe questions. So. Yeah, they were, they were pretty safe. So yeah, you guys were being quite kind to us actually. Yeah, didn't have to spill too much, you know. Thanks so much for joining us here on Spill It. And if you want to find out more or watch more, subscribe right here.